Hi. You might notice I'm offline right now. I am not live streaming, which is new to me when making videos. Um, but this is a bit more of a serious topic, and I don't want to be live and say something that mutes my point or something of the sort. So I'm sort of just going to talk to the camera, talk through what I'm thinking, and then let myself handle it later when I'm editing this video. So if you guys don't know me, my name is Avian J or Zach. I am a fish biologist and ichthyologist. I work with fish. Mainly what I've done throughout my time working with fish uh, is medicinal stuff. So parasitism, disease prevention, and treatment and so i've done you know a couple dozen surgeries uh, on on fish if that's what you want to call them throughout my career i know what they look like and i know what proper care of fish looks like and there is a youtuber who goes by the name of zach ketchum all who is doing these treatments or surgeries uh, in extremely inhumane ways that are causing direct pain to the animals they don't follow proper protocol it's not just fish uh, this guy just has a history of, of abusing the animals on his channel, but because the people who are watching him don't know better, he gets a lot of compliments. And he words it like he's helping, you know, the animal, and so a lot of people are like, oh wow, such a great person for helping the animal, when in reality, as someone who's an expert on the topic, at least on the fish section of it, I can tell you that he is not helping these animals. A person in my Discord, named Grayscale, who I'm friends with, pointed this out to me for the first time, and I asked them to just collect me some, some evidence so that I could talk about it. Because, you guys know, we make fun of, you know, crappy Megalodon videos and stuff like that a lot, right? And misinforming children, as bad as it is, is one thing. But literally showing people, millions of subscribers by the way, animal abuse and framing it as helping the animals, I think is another level of gross. I mean, you're not just misinforming, you're not just providing false evidence or just, you know, looking into very ridiculous claims. You are directly and hopefully not knowingly, but possibly knowingly misinforming people into potential animal abuse. So this is the kind of thing that I thought needed to be addressed. And it was not the kind of thing that I wanted to talk about online. Just kind of wanted to go over it. So this person in my Discord, Grayscale, who I thank very much, uh, watched a bunch of this guy's videos and compiled together for me some of the direct hard evidence of animal abuse. I'm not doing anything speculative. I'm not going to show more than 10 seconds of video. I am not risking any retaliation on the part of this YouTuber. So we're going to be as safe as possible. We are only looking at direct things and I will tell you my opinion on those things. Um, we'll only watch short little clips. Hopefully we can instill some kind of change, if not just educate people who are looking up to this guy as, you know, an animal helper who's actually abusing these animals. Maybe even teach him proper techniques. We'll start with things that I want to make clear. I have done dozens of real fish surgeries before, right? I know what these look like. I know the anatomy of a fish inside and out very, very well, okay? And secondly, I am not acting as PETA here because that's a frequent criticism. When someone points out animal abuse on YouTube or other social media, people are like, oh, well, why are you being like PETA? Why are you, you know, over pointing these things out? I work with farm fish. Farm fish, most of the time, are raised to be eaten, right? I am around and in environments where fish are being raised for food. I don't personally eat fish, but I have no problem with people who do. That is not my issue with this person's actions. Hunting is fine, but I am well versed, well, well versed in what is humane and what is inhumane treatment of animals because I've been working in that industry for a while. So the name of the channel is Catch 'em All Fishing. This guy essentially does all sorts of fishing videos. You can see he does cooking, actual fishing, catching, but a lot of the things that he does or, you know, somewhat frequently are more along the lines of helping animals. So they're not just catching the fish and finding rare fish. They're trying to help them. So one of them here, this video, brushing my pet fish's teeth, which is certainly an interesting concept. Fish with cancer, life-saving surgery, how we saved the life of our you know, a monster fish. Things like that where there's an implication that beyond just fishing, this person is doing things that are helping the fish, are making them better, things like that which have gotten him a somewhat positive reputation. Uh, but when you look a little deeper at what he's actually doing, it, it's quite gross. So we're gonna start with the, the brushing your, your wild caught fish's teeth because to me, this is wild. So starting off, he is catching a knife fish. Because I know it looks silly, but I'm just gonna make sure that there's nothing sticking on them. And so if this looks ridiculous, uh, there's a reason for that. It's because it is ridiculous. Things like parasites that will, will latch on to a fish 
will latch on to the fish. Uh, it would be a pretty bad parasite if it could be scrubbed off with just a little toothbrush. Nothing you do with a toothbrush is going to cause a parasite to, to fall off of the fish. If you guys have ever been bitten by a tick, if you've ever had a tick in you, when a tick is biting you, is in you, it, half of its body is, you know, submerged in your skin. You can't just take a toothbrush. It takes like tweezers and you have to pull out and destroy skin. It's a whole process. The point is, if parasites were so bad at latching on, that they would just fall out when they got brushed by a toothbrush, they wouldn't be so good at surviving as they are in so widespread. For one, this toothbrushing method is not doing anything. It's likely just irritating the skin within the mouth. That's a sensitive part of the fish. It's, it's a weird thing to do and claim is helping in some way. It's not. This is not how you remove parasites. There are a way to remove parasites. Um, you know, temperature differences, salinity differences, things that fish can tolerate but parasites are too small to adjust to all work very well in a quarantine system. Brushing their teeth does not really work very well and is just going to irritate them more than anything. Okay, so next up we've got this video where he buys all of the betta fish from a pet store. Uh, betta fish, also known as Siamese fighting fish, are quite aggressive with each other. Although people will say that, you know, females are non-aggressive and you can keep females together, and that's some sometimes true. In general, betta fish are, are quite aggressive. And the majority of the ones you'll see at stores are gonna be males, because those are the more colorful, pretty ones that kids want, right? And you'll get in the little cups. And so he goes to the fish store, he buys all of the betta fish, and then releases them into the pond and calls it a Game of Thrones uh, type duel. Talks about which clan he thinks is going to survive uh, the duel. Things like that, which basically indicate that he knows that he is putting all of these fish in here to fight each other to the death. Which, while not the worst thing anyone has done, seems irresponsible uh, to present to your audience as a cool and good thing that you're doing. Especially when, as he walks through the fish store, he talks about how he's saving all of these fish just to then put them into a pond where they will all fight to the death and likely none of them will survive. Okay, so this video is a crazy one. Axolotl survives inside the blob catfish. Basically in this video, he goes around and feeds his axolotls to various animals around his house, like catfish and frogs and things like that, and attempts to have his axolotl get eaten. Axolotls, by the way, are an endangered species or vulnerable species, are protected by the law uh, they're, you are not allowed to kill them or cause them any harm, and there's like a hundred thousand dollar fine for doing so. So it's absolutely insane to me that this guy is just taking these animals, killing them, I mean injuring them, maiming them, killing them, posting it on YouTube for a hundred thousand viewers, and seeing absolutely no repercussions. I mean this is literally like, hey look at this endangered species that I got, killing it on camera. Now clap, everybody clap. <laughs> the blob catfish actually eats this. If it does eat it, there will be a follow-up video with the catch and cook with your boy. So this is just an insane clip. He is feeding an endangered species to a catfish and he says that if the catfish eats it, that that must mean that it is safe for him to eat and promises to catch and cook this endangered species in a future video if his catfish eats it which has so many mental loopholes and things wrong with it that I don't even think that I need to go through it. Now you could chop these guys' legs off and tail off and then it'll all grow back. There he is. But you have to keep on sawing and make it a sawing motion, not like a clean cut, like you have to like saw it. Otherwise it won't get through the bones. What an insane intro. So essentially in this video, he is advocating for cutting off the legs of axolotls uh, in order to see how fast they regenerate. And his idea, the reason that he said that this was humane and this was an okay thing to do, is because one of the legs of the axolotl was not growing in correctly. And that leg was not growing in correctly specifically because the axolotl was stunted. It was kept in a terrible environment, and thus the axolotl was not growing properly. And his solution for helping the animal that he stunted the growth of and put in this shitty situation is to cut off its legs so that they grow back better because axolotls can regenerate. It's insane. There's no anesthetic use. They literally just use a kitchen knife to cut off this poor thing's legs. He literally forces his girlfriend to do it. I don't know what to say besides that. This is an another good point by Grayscale. He uses stress coat, that thing you saw in the beginning. He coated the entire fish in stress coat, uh, which is m number one active ingredient is aloe vera, which is toxic to axolotls. So just a clear lack of knowledge of what is going on with these animals. 
So this is another crazy one. I just keep finding these ridiculous videos. This one is called Fish with Cancer Life-Saving Surgery on Mini Moo. And this is the only one of his videos I've actually seen get negative feedback. There's actually multiple people who are talking about this, that he's been doing this wrong. This fish does not have cancer, does not have tumors. It actually very clearly has dropsy, which is a condition that arises when there's some kind of buildup or swelling within the fish. It can be renal failure, liver failure, it can be a swim bladder disorder. There's a lot of reasons, but the outside of the fish has nothing to do with it. Anyone who has basic anatomical knowledge of a fish would know that dropsy has nothing to do with the outside of the fish. It's the insides pushing the outside skin out, the epidermal layer, which causes the scales to sort of pine cone off as they don't have that room. They're being pushed outwards. Uh, and so really, anyone who's worked with fish in any medical sense at all should very easily be able to recognize dropsy but he calls it a tumor he calls it cancer and he does a surgery on that fish uh, which very much should be quarantined and taken care of not had a knife stuck in it yeah and he also doesn't use anesthetics so there's a debate about whether fish feel pain or not, but it's fairly inconclusive. And for the most part, we're pretty sure that some of the larger fish, at least some of the more intelligent, more developed fish do feel pain. So doing a surgery without anesthetics is absolutely insane. I mean, you're literally cutting into them alive. I don't know what to say to explain why that's unacceptable and not humane practices other than it isn't. It just isn't. If you're not killing a fish, eating a fish for food, it's just absolutely cruel to not anesthetize the fish cut into it, do surgery, which he's doing a tumor removal surgery on a fish which just has dropsy. None of the parts add up at all. So this is probably, for me at least, the most appalling one that I came across and just insane to me. Like, I understand why people are believing the things that he's putting out there, but they're just so dumb. Basically, there's a carp swimming around in this pond and he gets video of a bird dive bombing and attacking the area near it. Okay, and he comes to the conclusion, he specifically says actually that the bird must have hit the carp hard and that caused its swim bladder to mess up. So the carp wasn't able to swim correctly. That was his conclusion. The carp can't swim correctly, swim bladder's messed up. First and foremost, carp are an invasive species and he should be killing it. There's absolutely no reason to be, to be helping the carp in the first place. But if you are going to help the carp, you should probably do it correctly. Uh, essentially what he does is he says that the carp has something wrong with its swim bladder, sticks his whole finger in the carp's anus, then takes a kitchen knife, sticks it into the carp's anus, and pops the swim bladder. The swim bladder, if you don't know, is an organ which contains gas in order to allow the fish to be buoyant. And sometimes there'll be a disorder of the swim bladder caused for a variety of reasons, which causes the fish to not be able to balance itself in the water, not be able to float correctly, not be able to sink. And so what he does is he sticks a knife in there and pops the swim bladder, which is not a solution. I mean, it's absolutely insane. It's. I don't, I don't know how to compare it. It's like my lungs got overfilled with oxygen, so I'll just stick a knife in there and pop my lungs. Like, okay, great, they're not overfilled with oxygen now, but they don't work. <laughs> this fish will not be able to swim properly, right? This fish will not be able to maintain buoyancy at all. And so then he lets the fish go. You should be able to swim straight down. And this fish goes straight down underwater, which it was not able to do before. And he takes this as evidence that what he has done uh, is proper treatment. The fish can now go down underwater. But here's a crazy thought. If a fish has an organ specifically meant for buoyancy to float, and you pop that organ so it can no longer float, what is it going to do except go down? <laughs> the issue isn't going down. The issue is when's the fish going to be able to come back up? That fish is going to die. I mean, there's just there's no helping it at that point. You have popped an essential organ. Uh, and this is what I find most dangerous about this channel for me, is that this video has 400,000 views. This guy is out here showing people impressionable kids, children, ways to harm animals uh, in just really terrible, unhelpful ways. Uh, they provide absolutely nothing to, to the animal other than harm. And he's presenting it as fact, he's presenting it as help. And people are just going to take this as fact and as help. I've seen it in a lot of comments on his videos like, oh my God, thank you, Zach, for, for showing us. Thank you for teaching us. Thank you for, you're such a good person for doing this thing. That's people genuinely believe because why wouldn't they? It's fair enough. People who are naive on the internet believe whatever, whatever they're told. And 
If you're told that this, you know, popping the swim bladder is going to help the fish swim better and then you watch the fish swim into the deeper water, it's like, okay, fine. They've done a great job. Good job to Zach. It takes a little bit of deeper knowledge, just a little bit of deeper knowledge to understand that what he's doing is abuse. It is causing harm to the animal. He has killed that carp and not even in the direct way you're supposed to kill the carp. He killed it just through a very indirect and odd way that I, I did not appreciate. That's really all I have to say. There's a lot more videos. There's a lot of things he says that are really off-putting. There's a lot of speculative things, but I don't want to do any speculation. I don't want to risk any kind of defamation whatsoever. I just want to show you the clear evidence that this guy is out here abusing animals posting it on YouTube as help and as evidence, uh, and hopefully something can be done about it and he can be held accountable because this person should not have 4 million subscribers and should not have this many people looking up to him and trusting the things that he says.